Hello everyone. I am coming live from Denver, Colorado today and I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday filled with joy and abundance. I can tell you my pants are fitting a little tighter today and for that I do give thanks that I have the opportunity to eat so much food with with wonderful friends that that is actually <laughs> a problem for me so hooray for tight pants today <laughs> um, as usual let me just share this very quickly on my um, personal page so I will take a moment to do that as I chat with you here I'll share it on my timeline um, Okay. Um. Okay, almost there. There we go, that should be posted to my timeline as well. So no matter where you join us from, whether it's the Insoma page or my own personal page, um, you should be able to find this video and you can always go back to either of those sources uh, after the fact and, and um, revisit it. And what I try to do, because I do a little intro each time, I introduce myself and kind of say hello, I will also put in the comments to the video where the actual topic uh, starts each time. So if you've watched a couple of these videos and you've heard my intro and um, want to skip past this this beginning welcome message, although I do love welcoming you all, uh, that's perfectly fine and I will update that. I also do uh, do this intro so that people who are joining me live have a few minutes to jump on and get engaged before I really get into the topical conversation. So thank you again everyone who joins me and um, if you don't know who I am I was in corporate behavior change for many many years and I learned a quite a few different uh, had many experiences learned quite a few different techniques there for helping people improve their lives and change their behavior so it's my joy and my passion to bring those topics to you so that you can apply them to your own life and your friends and family in any way you find useful if there are any topics that you're particularly interested in and you would want me to cover or any experiences you've had that you want to share I would love to hear from you as well I truly just enjoy connecting with people I try to provide you with small, intelligent, and actionable ways to make changes for a more happy and well-balanced life. Before the holidays came upon us, I was talking about some things that were a little bit intellectual and heady around behavior change. Um, they had to do with parent-child and adult ego states and the transactional analysis theory. I'm going to continue to put those on hold because I do feel like there are some topics that are far more directly applicable, not that those aren't, <laughs> but far more directly applicable to the holiday season when we're getting bombarded with so much stimuli and demands on our time and priorities changing and chaos and we lose ourselves in, in not having our usual schedules. So while I still I think those topics are worth covering, I'm going to just give us a little bit more um, uh, tactical focus topics right now and then um, revisit those probably in the new year. So today's topic is about perception. I touched on this a little bit in my last video as well a couple weeks ago before Thanksgiving. But a lot of your experience in life and, and is, is not cut and dry. It's really what your brain makes of it and you can have two, three, four people in the exact same situation and each one of them walks away with a completely different experience. And that doesn't mean that one is right or wrong or that one person is lying or that things uh, happened differently. It's just that we all over time develop these ways, these patterns, these, these habits and rituals and of, of experiencing life without sometimes even knowing them or being intentional about it. So here's one example of how that can happen. 
I was a child of the 80s and many of you may remember the game Tetris. I know it's still out there as well and, and probably still popular in some ways. So hopefully I have some of you watching this who may have played Tetris at some point in their lives. And if you played enough of that game, those little falling blocks and fitting them into the different uh, <laughs> slots and everything, they started to create expectations in your visual perception and your brain started going, oh, I can see this pattern in these Tetris blocks. I can see as this one falls, I can turn it this way and there's this hole here and it will fit this. And you do that enough times and it becomes almost hardwired or almost second nature to you to move those blocks and, and look for them and look for those patterns. If you ever played hours and hours of Tetris and then went outside, you started perhaps noticing a funny thing happening, which is you start seeing those Tetris patterns everywhere, whether that's in skyscrapers and buildings looking like blocks. I would be seeing my brick wall behind me and looking for, oh wait, here's a shape. I see these, these two here that are the, uh, that particular shape that can be turned and twist. And your brain just starts to pick up these Tetris patterns everywhere without you intentionally going out and saying, hey, I'm going to look for Tetris blocks in the real world. There are probably other games that do this as well. I, that's just the one I'm most familiar with. So maybe you can think of your own examples of when you've done something enough times that you just start to see that thing happening in outside of the, the, the proper context for it. The reason I bring this up is because it's a very simplistic example of how we can end up through repetition and through doing something that we enjoy, how we can end up rewiring our real world experience. So that can be a good thing as well. We can use that to our advantage. You may have heard, and, and this is a, a kind of a continuation of that, that idea, of something called the bader meinhof syndrome. And that is actually how you pronounce it. I've heard of people say bader meinhof but it's Bader, and it was actually, um, has an odd history to it. It was named after a, a German terrorist group. Uh, but the idea of it is that once you start to see something or once you learn something new, you start experiencing it and seeing it everywhere. So you may have uh, had your eye on a particular model of car or um, maybe um, learned about some some uh, new piece of information, let's say. And, and I want to take a quick pause to say hello to Beamer and Stephanie and Mark. I thank you so much for joining me. It really um, makes me a lot more engaged and happy when I see live people watching. So if you do have any comments while I'm speaking and want to interact with me while I do this, that is totally fine with me as well. I really enjoy it. So thank you for, for joining me live. So uh, back to what I'm talking about, the bader meinhof syndrome, and it can be good or bad. So um, you may have, uh, for example, in, in my, my case, here was an example for me, is there was one point in my life where I w was getting diagnosed with a lump in my thyroid, and I you know, was waiting for the diagnosis to come back, and I thought, is it cancerous, is it not, what's going on? So of course, then everywhere I'm walking around, I'm seeing ads for cancer charities and learning um, you know, new information. And I wasn't actively seeking out this information. It was just all of a sudden I learned about a friend of mine who had just been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And it seemed like that particular thing was entering into my life over and over, even though that wasn't something I was seeking out. So you probably all have your own examples of this. I know sometimes when um, um, people are trying for children, whether they are uh, found out they're just pregnant or they're striving to be, they see babies everywhere. So that's the kind of corollary to the Tetris, is the Tetris is you wire your brain to see patterns. Bader Meinhof is you may have just learned a new piece of information and your brain is actually trying to reinforce that information and trying to reward itself subconsciously for going, hey, I just learned that, that's awesome. I'm going to look for this thing and um, not even while I'm thinking about it. And it gives you that little bit of extra um, 
little a dopamine rush that when you see these patterns it, it makes it makes your brain happy it makes your brain chemistry uh, have spark a little bit and reward itself so in other words though and here's something that is I find fascinating about it is you start agreeing with yourself too like oh well this is out there everywhere I must you know I this must be a, a, a sign you know we, we all kind of whether you're at all um, believe in a cult or religion or not, we all kind of can fall prey to feeling like there are signs out there for us. So this is a, an outcome of the bader meinhof syndrome or otherwise known as um, selective attention, frequency illusion, or recency illusion. So you do have a few different um, aspects and flavors to it as well. So just be aware that this is something we love as, as intelligent, pattern-seeking, um, highly evolved beings. We really love finding patterns, creating patterns, and rewarding ourselves for them. Okay, so what does this have to do with the holidays and enjoying them? I'm going to have us all do a little experiment, and I hope you'll do this with me. I'm going to ask you in just a moment to close your eyes and imagine the color red not just in some sort of an abstract sense really focus on it and think of a particular red and, and, and let it be saturated in your mind and see it we're only going to do this for maybe five ten seconds this is not a two minute exercise but keep your eyes closed and then when and when you open them be aware of if that color or flavors thereof pop out at you from from the room from wherever you are right now and if you feel like there's absolutely no red in any part of the, the area that you're in you could a try it anyways and see if your brain um, tries to make that color show up in other other fashions or B pick a different color if you really want to do green or blue or something else okay so I'm gonna do this with you I'm, let's everyone close our eyes and just focus and think about red. It can be a nice cranberry red, fire engine red, whatever red speaks to you. All right, got it? Now, just open your eyes and look around. And wow, are the reds popping for me. I, I have a red pillow and a blanket on the couch. I, ha I happen to have a book sitting right here that I d hadn't even really noticed before that this cover just popped out at me. So I'd love to hear in the comments or at some point did that, did that work for you? If it didn't, maybe try holding it a little longer, try holding a different color that is, is a little um, easier for your brain to, to, to crystallize there. So that example is selective perception is your brain is focused on a concept which in this case is the color red and then it will that concept will become at least quickly and temporarily uh, much stronger and I'm still seeing it I just glanced up and noticed oh I have a red candle holder across the room that I had never really thought of as being red before <laughs> um, so it's kind of a neat thing now where can you use this in in your day-to-day -day holiday experience well if you're out in at a store and oh my god screaming kids lots of activity going on um, crowds unpleasantness you can experience it that way or you can take a moment close your eyes you don't even have to close them but and try to imagine that what you're really seeing is families friends tr getting out there to buy gifts for others, to prepare for some gathering that they're having. So you can kind of re reimagine this scene as this is everyone trying to come together. These are people who are doing activities, aren't sitting in front of a TV right now, doing activities with each other. They don't usually do. Uh, maybe that will prompt you to be a little more patient, offer some sort of help to them, whatever is appropriate in the situation. The point is, you can take literally a few seconds, five, ten, you know, this is not a lengthy exercise, to just take a moment and imagine 
something positive. Imagine that all these people are um, back home sitting around uh, having ha opening presents or enjoying each other's company and and then somehow reframing that in the, in your brain will rewrite the story of where you are in the moment and and change your focus. So give that some some thought the next time you're out in a questionable, unpleasant situation, you can decide not only what you're going to focus on. So the, the idea of that red experiment that we did there was also selective perception. It's not just that you're perceiving the color red as good or bad, but you are deciding in the moment that the color red is going to be my primary focus. Once you do that consciously, you don't have to continue doing it. Your brain will hold on to that message for a while longer. So if our brains are constantly scanning and f trying to figure out their focus and we decide consciously to do little tiny exercises and take steps to instruct our brains what and how to focus on, we end up benefiting and profiting in our lives from three key tools, which are happiness, gratitude, and optimism. So I'm not saying go out there and just, just grin and bear it and pretend like you're having a great time because the authenticity is really the only thing that's going to have a lasting effect. So this isn't about pretending that the circumstances are different. This is about training your brain, using these kind of cool, small, little, I'm not a big fan of the term life hacks or brain hacks, but you know, small little exercises to rewire in the moment, in these teachable moments, rewire your brain to shift the perception and shift the focus. And even if you just start out by trying this with the color red while you're shopping, at least focus or whatever it is you're doing, or you're stuck in traffic, or <laughs> there's usually plenty of red when you're stuck in traffic, all those brake lights in front of you. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Even if you just use this to focus on a color instead of on the negative emotions that might be going on, even that could be kind of a fun experiment to do and see how it ends up shifting even temporarily that experience. I'd love to hear if you try this, how that worked out for you. And I hope that we're all supporting each other and being as patient and kind as possible as we go through the holiday season and all the other trials and tribulations of, of the world around us and uh, be kind to each other. I um, do geek coaching and public speaking, so if you have any interest in uh, working with me directly or having me come speak to a group that you may be part of or even uh, speaking remotely, I would love to talk to you about it. Thank you again for joining me and um, you have made my day as you always do and I mean this sincerely you have made my day better by showing up and being interested in not only what I have to say but being people who are interested in improving the world around them and trying to understand themselves and others a little bit more deeply so make your own day better make someone else's day better do a, a small thing that can mean a big can be a big deal for someone else and just get out there and um, enjoy each other's company. Thank you again for watching, and I will be here every Thursday through the holidays. I'm not planning on taking any other uh, breaks or any other, um, I I'll take you with me if I end up going to a fun party on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> but Nice to see you all, and I'll be back as usual next week.